documentary about the Shamrock Irish pub. Let's join us. We're going to the beach today. We're going to laugh and sing our cares away. The sun is shining on our face. We can take it in and let it out. Hello, my name is Carmen. Um, I'm interviewed with the uh, owner, with Mr. Kerry. Let's introduce yourself. With good evening, Carmen. Hello, good evening. Welcome to our Irish pub. Um, I'm very grateful for you guys to come and do this project because me being a previous teacher of your school, which yes. I had a lot of fun with, some yes. nice girls, the terrible boys, but uh, I enjoyed it. Yes, thank you. And uh, I am only too happy to help you girls for your project. Uh, today we I will ask you the first question was what are the reasons for you to open this pub in Lucent? Yeah. <clears throat> I'm glad you said it right this time. Pub. Yes. The restaurant is a restaurant, but a pub is something different. Yes. A pub is uh, lots of people don't know. It comes from the name public house. Uh -huh. yeah. And public house is a house where everybody can go in from the pub. Yes. But the <clears throat> owner of this house has the right to let you in or not let you in. Oh, I see. Depending on how he feels. Of course, there has to be a reason why he doesn't want to let you in, but he has the right. And that's why they call him a landlord. Okay. You know, that's in the old Irish and English uh, explanation of this public house. And the short is pub. And Irish pubs in the last 10, 15 years have become world famous. Uh, what makes them different from Swiss, of course, from German? Um, maybe it's the Irish atmosphere which we try to create. For a pub, it's for people to go in, relax. Relax, yes. Relax. You're supposed to be able to relax in every establishment, in restaurants, in bars, in hotels. But the thing about the Irish one is easy going. Easy going. So, that doesn't mean that people can do what they want because you have an atmosphere depending on who runs the boss of the pub and he will have his standards you know what how the people are how far they can go how they can have fun no oh, that's okay ah uh, no standing on the tables no uh, being rude to the girls, yes. not be interfering with the other people. Have a good time amongst yourselves. Everybody has the right. But that's why it has become so popular with young kids, you now like you, automatically have a contact. That's why people go there. But it has to be uh, run properly. For the people, the type of people I like, you see downstairs, you have young ones, older ones, very old ones, yeah. boys, girls, all nationalities. Yes. Well, and they sit around, jump here, jump there, that doesn't matter. So they have a good time. And that's, that's the idea of a bar or a restaurant or a pub. You go there and relax and enjoy yourself, because it costs money also. Yes. So you have to try and be fair in business also. Not just take the money, take the money, take the money. Be a little elastic, you know. Give the guest a little, you know. Be nice, be kind a bit. But you have to be business as well. I feel it's a nice business and a good business. Okay. Thank you very much. Did I answer your question, Carmen? Yes, thank you I'm very much. Glad. Hello, my name is Ina. I will continue the second question. Hello, Ina. Hello, Mr. Nice Perry. to meet you. Nice to meet you too. 
So I would like to know about the history, the background of this spot. <laughs> Uh, this has been a restaurant for many, many years. Uh, as far as I know, there was a good restaurant and there were quite a few restaurants in Luzern years ago. And this is for a lunch place, it was very good, and for the evening place. But after a while, Luzern became so full of restaurants. Yeah. And each one slowly, this one closed. There wasn't enough business for them all. So they changed the concept from a restaurant to a bar. To a bar, so just a bar, bar just drinks. Restaurant and now they become a bar. Bar restaurant now. Now we are a pub restaurant. But uh, they changed over the years, like uh, all the concepts were changing. But we found that this was a bar before, but it just wasn't done to it because we lots of other bars. But we are the only Irish pub. That's why it's written on the door. Yeah. Irish shamrock, Irish pub. Shamrock is uh, a flower. A flower? Oh, I like that. The Irish leaf. flower. A tree, leaf, shamrock. That's what we have on the St. Patrick's Day. You know St. Patrick's Day? Everybody knows it. And, um, and the Irish are known for pubs in Ireland, of course, where everybody goes to meet. It's a meeting place. We are known for easy going, live Irish music or music, because the Irish like to sing. You know, you usually have fireplaces in the pubs, you know, open fire. It's a nice atmosphere. Fish and chips, what they eat mostly in Ireland, the Irish food. Because this day and age, people go to all countries for the holidays. And Ireland has become very, very, very popular with uh, young kids like you. You know, they go off tramping or hiking, and now oh, we go to Ireland. Girls, they go groups or girls alone. And uh, in pubs, the girls are quite safe. It's like downstairs, you have to watch, you know, you watch the four beautiful girls in and there's two boys I don't like, uh, uh, and we have to watch them. And if there's any problem, then go. Leave my girls alone. It's because I am responsible. I have my license on this, you know, from the police. I have to have the qualifications to run this. And uh, that's part of my job, looking after your guests. Same as you will be responsible for your guests when you go into hotel management. Yeah. That's part of your job. People can't go in and not feel safe. They don't go in. That's why lots of girls, when you go down there, you see lots of girls on their own. And that's, that's good, that's nice. So I would like to know like, what, type, what type of alcohol you serve right here for the customers? Like normally? Yeah, the menu. You look at it there. Yeah. Um, let me start with the light drinks. That's beer. Mm -hmm. Five, five and a half percent of alcohol. Then we have uh, draft beer, bottled beer. And then we have the whiskies, Irish whiskey. We are very well known for our whiskies, our special whiskies. So I want to know, is it difficult to get a license to serve alcohol in this restaurant? It's really difficult. Yeah, you have to have a license to run a restaurant, or a bar, or a pub, or a hotel. It's not people just uh, put the money down and run it. You have to be qualified. And they will check like every year or...? Well, you have to renew it every year, and you have to pay every year. And they will check in between. The alcohol uh, <clears throat> people from the state will come and check your whiskies. And also, what they're very, very strict on is to check the people who are drinking. Okay. How old they are. The customer. Yeah. Are they old enough? Are they old enough? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because if I give somebody a whiskey under 18, then I am in trouble. 
not him. <laughs> That's my job, my responsibility, to see that nobody too young gets uh, strong alcohol. 16 is for beer. 16 is for beer in Switzerland, but the strong alcohol is for above 18. 18, then it's uh, strong alcohol. Yeah. You're just like uh, cigarettes. Now the new laws in Switzerland, you see down at the bar, we have a little uh, pot there with uh, little coins. That's for the cigarette machine. So before they get cigarettes, they have to take a, a coin, a gold chip. From the bar? Yeah. So you can check the person who is... Exactly. Who is buying it. And they say, yeah, that's me. I am. How old are you? Oh, 18. <laughs> Show me your license, show me your ID. ID, and I have to be. Otherwise, I get into trouble. That's very strange. And that's, uh, that's uh, I think it's a uh, good job. Good afternoon, Mr. Carey. Good I'm afternoon, Sonia. <laughs> Thank you for joining us today, taking your time. So, I'm a student from BHMS, and today I have a few questions for you, if that's fine. Yes, that's all right with me. That's yeah. fine. Okay. So, Without further ado, let's move on to the first question. Okay. Yeah. So the first question is, um, what are your promotion efforts for the club? Do you have any? Um, do you use any social media to advertise your club? Yes. Yeah. Uh, the <coughs> local newspaper, town newspaper. Uh, we have Facebook. We have. Uh, posters, post it up, you see when you come in the door, the week ahead, what's going on, I like the Irish music on a Thursday, traditional Irish music, live, then on Friday we have uh, different music, modern music, and Saturday we have music, and then we have on Sunday, we have what we call a pub quiz, it's a, uh, where everybody takes part, or they make teams of two, three, or four maximum. And then they sit around and they fill out all four answer the questions we give them. And it's for, for, for international questions and international people. So you don't have to be English or Irish or American. The Swiss like this. It's a great uh, opportunity for them. You know, to brush up on their English and to learn the English, English directed questions, obviously. They have fun, we have fun, we have turnover, and that word spreads around. That's uh, activities people talk about you. And it's like in, in, in uh, business, in the hospitality business, it's not good if people don't talk about you. True. Word of mouth, correct? That's uh, right. Uh, you talk, talk good or you talk bad, <laughs> but they talk about you. True. So if they don't like, talk about you, you don't exist. So it's like a free advertisement for your part. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay, the next question would be, um, how do you recruit your employees? Do you have any specific nationality in terms of recruitment? Or? Yes. Because um, since there are some you saying that you only employ um, Irish employees. Yeah. yeah. So do you have any comment about that? Yeah. We have we have Irish. Uh, Dave, that's over there. He's Irish. Mike, he's Irish. Who else is Irish? There are one, two, three, four Irish. Four. But now we have a new one. He's English. Oh. We have uh, another one. He's French, not French, he is uh, Australian. We have one in the kitchen, he's Canadian. Another one in the kitchen, he's from uh, Philippines. They're all, so to speak, English speaking people. So, do you, do you by any chance have any Swiss employees? On the other yes, we have a secretary upstairs. She is. She is Swiss, a student that doing, that's finishing her school, but there's a part-time job here because we don't need a full-time 
it's actually as you see we're only a small place it's not a hotel it's just a pub restaurant True. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. so there's no sense of discrimination um, of no. nationalities no 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 but you know discrimination that's a uh, uh, what should I say it's a a word used a lot yeah. for for like me, I'm a foreigner here, even though I have, I'm Swiss and I have a passport, it doesn't matter, I'm still Irish. And uh, uh, lots of people think the Swiss are discriminated. It's not true. Well, okay, I can't talk for everybody, but here, no. Uh, hello, Mr. Kerry. My name is Trent. I'm a student from BSMS. Trent. 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 Yeah. 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 Uh, I would like to ask you the first question um, regarding to the quality uh, product control. Um, like, how do you control the quality of your product, or do you implement uh, the first in, first out? Behind, of yeah. course, yeah. and uh, everything is is dated, mm. uh, particularly for the for the foodstuffs in the kitchen that we have to by law have a date on it when when it's uh, produced and how, how long it will take till it's sold that must be kept to these dates. That's why uh, experience in the kitchen you will have to have that he knows in three days time how many portions do I make. To answer your question yes. to uh, control which is very important we have yeah. uh, health police here in Switzerland who come on, 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 on expected, you go to the kitchen and check this, and check the list, and see if it's signed, and the dates are on it, and uh, the right temperature. These are all things, uh, uh, <coughs> hygiene and uh, food control from the state. And how, yeah. how often he come? Like once a month? Or? No, it's, uh, we don't know. I just come like... He come really unexpected. Mm. So he could come today and he come again tomorrow. And maybe wait until another three weeks. Or maybe six weeks. And that is re like according to the Swiss law. Swiss law, that's yeah. right. Now they have a check. <coughs> so they check the statistic of this this pub, restaurant. And they see, aha, they were, they were bad here, they were bad there, they were bad there, they were bad there. So we go again quickly. Good, if that's all right, that's, that wasn't so good, but they fixed it for the next time, they fixed it again, it was all right, it was like, oh, we'll just leave that. So they have experience as well, which restaurant to go, and if it's not a proper restaurant, properly kept, they will come very often. But if it's um, always correct, or more or less, then they know it's well kept, well run restaurant, so they leave you. But uh, I don't mind they can come any day, because yeah, the because cook is instructed, yeah. the waiters are instructed, and everybody is instructed what they have to do. Because we have what you call a work plan. A work plan, i show you. That's for the staff, the handbook. Staff handbook. Yeah. Here we have information of uh, for firms who deliver the fridges, oh. deliver the fryers, deliver the, who does the coffee machine, um, oil, which is very important for the kitchen. Old oil has to be picked up, change it, yeah. but we can't throw it away, then it destroys the, the drainage. Mm, yeah. right. So we put them into barrels, mm. special barrels supplied by these firms. And like today, I call them, would you please come on Friday? No, no, we come tomorrow. And he takes the old oil, because we have to change the oil regularly. Yeah. Then we have places where we order the beer, uh, minerals, and we try to keep the firms that we order from uh, condensed into one or two firms, you know, not just one film for wine, one film for beer, one film for minerals. They do them all together. That's a modern. 
Now that's the, what the cook has to do in the morning. It's kind of a job description. Job description, what he has to do. Yeah. And that has to be uh, available, the handbook, we call it. That's what he has to do for the setup in the morning for his lunch. Yes. That he has to do before, before he goes home, when he's closing. Well, how he has to leave the kitchen, how clean, what he has to do, what yes. he has to put away, put in the fridge, put out the lights, the electricity, yes. and then we have the recipes for him. Is the recipe changed, like how often you change the recipe? We don't change the recipes, but we change the menu. Uh, in the, the summer. Uh, yeah, the summer and then in the, in the, in the winter. Like yeah. drinks, hot drinks and cold drinks in the summer, cold kitchen uh, yes. for the summertime, salads mm. and fruits, exotic fruits. Yeah, right. well, we have this, the portion control, how much they have to give to the customer. Yeah. But you also have to be fair yes. what you charge and what you give, you know? Yes. Wow. So you see, that all has to understand what they do for the kitchen. Like that, the, the, the hygiene laws in Switzerland are very, very strict. Yes. That's what we call the handbook, which everybody can have a look, which they should. Thank you so much for showing us. Would you like me to sing now? Ah, yes. Can I sing for that thing? If you ever go across the sea <laughs> to Ireland, it may be at the closing of your day. Now that's included in your price. Because I'm very expensive, you know? All right. <laughs>